name is Shai Schmalzer, I'm part of the Oracle Visual Builder team, and in this demonstration we're going to show you how to create and run progressive web applications or PWAs with Oracle Visual Builder. We'll create a new application, we'll give it a name, and we'll use the default templates for this application. Just like any other application, we're going to start by connecting this application to some data sources. In our case, we're going to connect our application to service connections and we'll define them using the endpoints. So we'll paste the URL for the first connection. Uh, this service returns a list of countries, so we're going to give it a name over here, a uh, test to make sure that it works, and create this endpoint. Then we're going to add one more endpoint to this REST service. This endpoint allows us to fetch the information about a specific country. So let's test this one, bring in based on a parameter, and create the second endpoint. Now that we have the sources of data for our application, we're going to create a new mobile application. We'll give it a name and choose one of our mobile templates. Any mobile application can be uh, exposed also as a progressive web application. So in this case, we're going to create two menu options and click finish here. This takes us into the visual page editor where we can visually design our application. So let's change the title of this page, we'll call it countries, and then we're going to use a list component to show a list of countries on the first page. We'll bring in the list and bind it to the results coming from our REST service. Choose a template for our page and then select the specific fields and information we want to show about each one of the countries. We can also indicate which type of field is going to be used. We're going to use the alpha2 code as the ID for each country. So this is how our application is going to look like and we're going to add one more page to our application. This page would allow us to see more details about a specific country we selected. So again, we're using the second REST service and we're passing to it the ID and then selecting the specific fields we want to show on the second page. Now we're ready to um, run our application. We'll just do two things before that. The first thing is we're going to allow anyone to access our application. We'll do an anonymous access application, although this is not a mandatory step. It's just going to make this demo simpler. And then we're going to enable the progressive web app packaging of this application. Over here you can set all sorts of properties for your progressive web app, including aspects like the name, the color scheme, and the caching mechanism. All right, so if we now run our application, it would show up in our emulator. And we can then build our application, basically creating the progressive web app packaged for our application. We get a QR code, and what we can do now is open up our mobile device and on our mobile device, we're going to invoke a QR code scanner and scan the QR code. This would give us a URL to an application. And when we click on it, this will bring up our application inside the browser on the device. But it would also prompt us to add the application to our home screen. Okay? And if we choose to do it and we click the Add to Home Screen button, this would download the application, okay, the resources for it, and add an icon to our set of applications. So we're going to close all the applications, including the browser, and show you that in our application list, we now have the countries application right here at the top right. Let's add it to our home page, and then we can click on it to invoke the application. As you can see, now when the application runs, it looks like a native application without the surroundings of a browser. Uh, the application works as expected. We can click on a country and see the information and go back to the list of countries. Now let's show you how this 
packaging allows you to easily get updates for your application. So first we're going to go into our application and do some updates. We're going to update the uh, page where we see information about a country and uh, do some UI changes here. So for example, we don't want this flag to be shown as text, rather we want to show it as an image. We'll pick up an avatar component and drop it on the page. Change the size and hook it to the source of the flag image. I'm also going to add two uh, input text components in here. Uh, one of them would be a number input down here. And then we'll add a switch component. And the goal of adding those is to show you that when those components render on a specific device, they're going to adopt the device look and feel. So you can notice how they look here. This is the iOS look and feel. Our device is actually an Android device, so you're going to see the change there. Let's also change the title of this page while we're here. We'll also add a hyperlink to the right side slot for our title. And we're going to hook this link to take a picture. So we're going to add an event here and use the built-in take photo action that will be invoked when we click on this link. So now let's run our application again. And we are going to rebuild the application or basically restage it to create the new version uh, so people can access it. So in our cloud, we're staging the new version of this application. And now we don't need to download anything. We just go back to our phone. And we're going to close the application okay, and invoke it again from the icon. And what we're getting now is the updated application. So if we now click on one of the countries, you would see the updated page. Note the look and feel of the various input component here, which is an Android look and feel. Next, we're going to show you that we can also turn uh, airplane mode on, basically disconnecting from the network, and our application would still work. Okay? So because the REST service that we call have a caching mechanism, the data is still available on our device. We're basically caching it in the browser. Even if we close the application and re-invoke it, because of the caching definition of our REST service, the list of countries is still available for us here, as well as the detail of a specific country that we clicked on before. If we click on the take a picture, we can actually use the device camera, take a picture directly from inside our application. So this is the application running on the mobile device. As you can see, it's fully functional and looks like a native application. One of the nice things about a progressive web app is that you can also launch it from the browser on devices. The application would open again in a browser and would prompt us to add it to the home page. If we click to add to home page, we're actually installing the app again on our computer. Then you can use the local application. To access it, you, for example, go and go to this URL on a Chrome browser, and then click to invoke the application. The application will pop up just like on your device, but this time running on your laptop. In this case, it's a Mac iOS, but it also works, of course, on Windows, with the same functionality that we've seen before, and the look and feel of the specific operating system. As we can see, progressive web apps are an ideal solution for applications that behave natively on mobile device but also work on your desktop.